Ahoy there! So, we are at the Seward Campground after two wonderful days of camping here. Now, we're at the military campground, so yes, you have to be military or sponsored to get in here. But it is fantastic. The Seward Military Resort was actually the original site of Fort Raymond during World War II. It was established in 1940, and for a brief time, over 3,200 soldiers from various units called Fort Raymond home. In 1944, it was deactivated and converted into a military recreation area. We're going to follow Morgan along here, and she's going to give us a grand tour of the area. So as you can see, this is the RV area, which has electric, water, and cable hookups. There is a dump station on site. And this is coming into the front office area. This is where everyone that's visiting the resort will park and check in. The main office area where there's a restaurant, bar, and gift shop. And for you coffee lovers out there, free coffee every morning. So besides reservations for the RV park, there are motel rooms, townhomes, yurts, and tent sites. Oh, and there is also a log cabin, but it's only for two people, so unfortunately, we have not been able to rent that yet since we have the kiddo in tow 99% of the time. So here Morgan is passing the motel rooms on the left and the townhomes on the right. And a pavilion for public use is just coming up on the right as well. And those awesome yurts. I believe there are six of them that you can rent out. To the left are the fish houses and freezer. Straight ahead is the washroom with great showers and a, a really nice laundry room. And then this is kind of the kid area and tent area. Now Morgan is bringing us back around to the campground. Now fires are not allowed at the actual camp, each individual campsites, but there are some nice group fire pits over on the right, which we definitely enjoyed and was able to get to know our neighbors. Now what we're doing is we're getting ready to disconnect. And I have to show you some really cool stuff here at the campground. Now one thing I've really got to show you here, since we're disconnecting, obviously we got great water supply. I don't know what the pressure is because I'm using my regulator. And I'm a wimp. I keep it at 50 PSI because I'm afraid. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to ask Morgan to go in there and turn on a faucet or something just to run the water all the way down. Or you can turn off the outside one. Now look at this. When it comes to campground hookups, I think this is the best I've ever seen. Besides having a light, we've got a telephone. We've got a telephone jack thing that I don't really don't know how that works. I think that's international. They've got cable TV here, which a bunch of people had coaxial cables hooked up, so I guess it works. They've got your one uh, 120 here, you know, with GFCI. You've got your, and this is usually 20 amp, which I believe is this switch here, uh, the breaker. Then we've got 30 amp which is this breaker, and then we got 50 amp, which is this breaker, which, since we're disconnecting, I have to shut that off. Now, how awesome, I mean, look at all that. Plus, this thing kind of snaps down, stays closed, waterproof. This light only comes on at night or when I open it, so this thing's just incredible. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to set that down. Now, I can tell that Morgan turned on water somewhere because now our pressure is zero. See, it went down from 50. Now, is it still going to be a little messy? Yeah. At least it's just water. Yep. So, the new friends that we made just leaving freaking camp over there, they're all from Los Anchorage. So, for them, this is what a three hour drive? We got a tour of that one we didn't take a video of, but it was a beautiful camper that they shared with us. Yeah, really nice. You know, just because we have the Wonder Lodge class, that doesn't mean we're Wonder Lodge snobs. Yeah, the Wander Lodge is awesome, but I can see the day coming when we want to do live a little bit simpler of a life. So. so, I've already disconnected both, so for the electric power, I just give it an eighth of a turn and pull, and then I'll be putting this cable away a little later. When I do put it down, I always set it down gently so I don't mess that up. Now, for the water, and what I've done is nothing new. I think a lot of people do this. 
I just use brass quick disconnects that you get from the garden center, and that's what you have in here. See, and then I just go ahead and the cap fits over it nicely like that. I'm good to go. Now this thing, like I said, for whatever reason, it has a lock. And you're going to hear me complain about it every single time until I do something about it. Now i got to carry keys, i got to lock it. I mean, who's going to steal whatever? I don't get it. But, let's remember the people that bought these water lodges when they were new were rich people. So I can understand why everything's going to lock on. We're not rich, so we don't need to lock in anything. Okay. <clears throat> So now, I'm just going to tidy up these cords, and we'll keep moving on. Now, ordinarily, I would put these two ends together to avoid spilling water in there. We're, up, we're not going that far, so I'm just going to put it together. But I do want to point out again, this Zero-G hose, awesome hose. And if we remember, we'll try to, try to put a link down in the description. So if you want to buy them, you buy them on Amazon and buy it through our link. A little bit of that change goes to the replacement tire budget, which we, I think we still have two years, but... This is going to be spendy when we replace these honkers. Okay, so let's tidy it up, put everything away. Take out this thing. And we're going to use that for the awning on the other side. So, I'm not going to lie. This extension cord, not light. This is some heavy-duty stuff. I can tell you, my welding cable isn't this heavy. But uh, it gets the job done. Doesn't get hot. Again, it's 50 amp. And it's got kind of dirty dragging through the rocks there. That's right. I'll clean it up before I use it next time. Uh, okay. Now we're going to put these awnings away. And I'm going to save the worst for last, which is the big one on the other side that always gets the creep. Now these are kind of neat. They don't have fancy retraction stuff. It's just spring-loaded. It's got this strap that holds it in place. Now the key here is when I put it back up, I go diagonally with the strap so the strap is not hanging out too long. So if I just go straight up, the strap is bang, bang, bang. So what I do is I'll roll it up like this. Just leave just enough strap. Now it's squeaker. Yeah, it needs a little oil. Yeah, this big one gives us some grief. It never wants to go up straight, so I think it's probably just worn out. Um, and these zip deke awnings, these are, uh, other than Air, airstreams. airstreams and wander lodges, I haven't seen them on a whole lot of other stuff. I don't know, you guys have any experience with these zip deke awnings or see us doing something wrong? Let us know in the comments. What did you get on your, oh, water? It's only a matter of time before I mess up this light yeah. green shirt. Hey, check it out though, huh? Jen's design on the shirt. Let us know in the comments what you think. Okay. We have, a, we have a very small leak that surfaced over the winter. And if you look right here, I don't know if you can see under there or not. See that? The sealant's totally failed. So that's our leak. Not a major leak. But... So yeah, we have a little minor leak there. 
and we'll get that taken care of. So I found some cracks on the RV covers, on the air conditioning covers, and that's gonna be something else I'm gonna to have to take care of. So we got up here with tape and scissors. I was thinking I was gonna cover these cracks on the air conditioners that we got from the snow loads. But as I look at it, I realize I need to stop drill those first so the cracks don't get any bigger. So that'll be the first thing we'll do. And it's gonna be at another time because we gotta get out of here. Look what happened. That must have happened this winter because it wasn't like this before. The ice got in there and completely stretched it out. Broke the weld back there. Yeah, got a little patching we got to do up here. It's too bad none of my welding stuff is here on the mainland. So, we're pulling our way out of Seward here, and we're sitting in, you know, just like everywhere, traffic jam. Hey, that La Palma, that stayed at the same place as us. Overall, what a beautiful trip. As usual, it felt like we didn't get to see half of Seward that we wanted to, but it was really fun to bring you guys along, as always. Hope you enjoyed that whole drone following Captain Morgan around thing, that was something new. Wanted to say thank you to all you people who subscribed, hit thumbs up, hit comments, we appreciate all the new folks that subscribed. Welcome aboard. Thanks for coming. And remember, be kind.